Today, we're here to learn the books of the Bible. Hi, this is Jason with Pilgrim's Light. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you're new, we appreciate you being here. If you're returning, you're a subscriber, we really appreciate your support. You might be asking the question, why should I learn the books of the Bible? Can't I just look it up online? Well, the percentage of people who use a print version of the Bible, 89%. Now, if you use a print version of the Bible, it's good to know where the books are, and it's good to know how to pronounce them. So I thought I'd put this video together, kind of go through it, show you how I memorize them, and how you can maybe uh, take some of what I've done and apply it for yourself so you can learn them as well. In the Bible, there's 66 books of the Bible. Now, this is a daunting list. If you want to try and memorize all of these just 66 books, straight rote memory, if you can do that, congratulations. That's just great. However, the Bible has given us a pattern. There is a pattern of the sections of the Bible that makes it easy to kind of uh, put things in your mind in, a, in an order so you can kind of have a framework to hang all of these books on. So let's take a look at that. Now, these are the numbers that you're going to need to kind of commit to memory. 5, 12, 5. 5, 12, 5. 22. That's right. Now, these are the number of books in each section, seven sections. Pretty biblical, right? 5, 12, 5, 5, 12, 5, 22. Now, I've color-coded these to correspond with the books that are in each section. So let's get to it. There are two divisions of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we have five books of the law, 12 books of history, five books of writings, five of prophets, and the 12, of course, has 12. On the New Testament side, we have the Gospels and Acts and letters to congregations. So those are the seven sections of the Bible divided into the two major sections of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. So let's take a look at the books of the law. The books of the law, also known as the Pentateuch, also known as the Torah, are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those are the first five. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, five books of the law. Next, we have the books of history. There's 12 here. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. These are 12 books of history, history of Israel. Now, I've broken these up to make them a little bit easier for me to, to grasp. And I just remember that Joshua Judges Ruth comes next. So that's Joshua Judges Ruth. Next are the twos, the, two, the pairs, right? The pair of Samuels, the pair of Kings, the pair of Chronicles. So that's First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. And then I just used E-N-E -E as initials, E-N-E, -N -E. that's Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. It's a nice little symmetry, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Now, I went really fast there, but as you get to know these, you get kind of a meter to them, and you'll go a little faster. Writings. How many books of the writings are there? That's right, there's five. Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs. I'll say those slower. Job, not Job, Job. Psalms, the P is silent. Psalms. Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, the E is long there. And so the I is also E sound, right? Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes. And Song of Songs, also in some Bibles as Song of Solomon. But in Hebrew, it's Shir Shalim, which means Song of Songs. Next, we have the Major Prophets. Now, this is a de designation given to them. There's no really major or minor prophets. They're all just prophets. But these are the larger works of prophets. So Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Ezekiel and Daniel, they're larger works of prophecy. So there's five of those. 
And then in the Hebrew tradition, all of these next ones have been known as the Twelve. The Twelve. And you guess that there's 12 of them. Uh, also known as the Minor Prophets. So Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, sorry, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. So there's 12 of those. Now I've also broken these up into smaller lists to help me, and I remember them in three groups of four. So we take them in three groups of four. You've got Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. I know that's a mouthful. I'll say it slowly so that you can get it one more time. Hosea, Joel, that one should be pretty easy. Amos, famous Amos, right? You should remember Amos. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, a lot of people with those names, pretty easy. Nahum, right? Nahum, that's how you say that. In Hebrew, it's Nahum, but Nahum. And then Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, right? So that one kind of throws people. Habakkuk, you know, you can actually you can pronounce it any way that you'd like as far as that goes. You can say Habakkuk, 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 you know, Habakkuk. Any of those will work. Habakkuk is how I usually say it. Zephaniah. Haggai, Haggai, right? Zechariah, Malachi, not Malachi, Malachi. There you go. So those are the 12. Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Easy as pie, right? The Gospels and Acts is next. Lots of people have an easy time with this one. Many people know it already. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts. And those are the five. You could call them New Testament history if you wanted. Okay, moving on to the next. This is the big chunk, right? There's 22 letters. So as these kind of scroll out, you can see we can put them in two columns of 11, and that makes 22 letters in the New Testament. So we're going to break these down into groups and uh, show you a little bit how these are organized. So here are the letters. We have the Pauline epistles and the general epistles. Epistles is a fancy word for letters. Pauline is a fancy word for Paul's letters, right? So Pauline epistles just means Paul's letters. So let's look at the Pauline epistles. So Romans and 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Now why are these after the book of Acts? Because after Acts comes the letters to congregations, and then they're in order of size. For Paul's letters are in order of size. So Romans and 1 Corinthians are the two longest ones. 2 Corinthians is next, right? So Romans and 1 and 2 Corinthians. Next, we have what we call the prison epistles. That's Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And there's another book included with these just for technical purposes. You can just remember Philemon goes with these if you'd like, but it doesn't come in the order because Philemon is the smallest book. So Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Now I got a little trick that I always use to keep these in order because they can easily mix these up. And I must have learned it long ago in Bible college or something, or maybe it was just in church. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, General Electric Power Company. So General Electric Power Company, uh, I can remember that pretty easy. It makes sense in English. And I can use those first letters to remember the order, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Next, we have uh, five T's in a row. So I know after Colossians, the five T's are coming. That's First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, and Titus. So the reason that I have those separated there is because then we know that those 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus are the pastoral epistles, or letters given to congregational leaders. Paul is giving them uh, information of how to properly conduct a congregation. And then finally, like I said before, at the last comes Philemon. So in order, all of this half is Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, 
Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, then wrapping it up with Philemon. Next, we move to the general epistles. First, we have the largest one, to the Jews. It's Hebrews. Hebrews comes next. After Hebrews, we have James, the brother of Jesus, quite possibly one of the most important figures in early, uh, for early believers is James, the brother of Jesus. His real name is Jacob. Uh, if you read in the Greek, it says Yaakov, which is Jacob, but in English, we have him as James. Next, we have Peter, first and second Peter. And this, of course, Jesus' number one disciple. Next, we have the beloved disciple of Jesus, John, also the writer of the Gospel of John. So John is the next most prolific writer next to Paul because he wrote the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then he also wrote Revelation, which is at the end. After 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and it's nice that they're all J's, we have the brother of Jesus again. This time it's Judas. Yeah, Judas, Judah, more likely. Uh, but Jude is how we have him in English, the brother of Jesus. And then finally, we have Revelation. That's the book of prophecies. So Hebrew, James, and then these two are pretty easy as far as remembering for me because first and second Peter, first, second, and third John. That's five books, two names, easy. I know Jude and Reve Revelation are coming at the end. So after Philemon, I don't have very much uh, left to, to kind of memorize. I just have to know that Hebrews comes next and James. Then first and second Peter, first, second, and third John, Jude, and Revelation. Once you know that uh, these books are typically ordered from the longer to the smaller, with the exception of Revelation there at the end, then you kind of are able to know that Hebrews comes before James. Well, I've spent quite a bit of time on this, uh, but hopefully that'll help you. The New Test Testament is kind of a large one to, to do, but once you're in there a lot, once you're reading it a lot, it becomes easier. Now that we've gone over everything, let's review. Above are the major categories of Scripture, the Law, the History, the Writings, Prophets, the Twelve, the Gospels and Acts, and then the Letters to Congregations. The Law has five, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Books of History, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Writings, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs. Prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. The Twelve, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Next, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts, and then 22 letters. Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. Well, I hope this has been helpful. As you look, you can see that there's a, a symmetry of all this. Now, is that just coincidence? Well, I'm going to explain the symmetry in a future video. If you'd like to delve a little bit deeper about the structure of the Bible, it's fascinating. Come with us next time, and we will cover that. You've been watching Pilgrim's Light Ministries. We exist to train you in how to learn, know, and teach the Bible. Our training is always free. For more content like this, please watch, like, comment on our videos. Subscribe and click the bell notification so you won't miss anything. Well, thanks for sticking through to the end. I want to say God bless you, God keep you, God watch over you, and make you complete in everything you do.